Good afternoon, everyone. Arctic temperatures below normal for 50 days. Media doesn't talk about this. The reality of Arctic sea ice compared to IPCC projections, if it is the hottest year ever, why is there this much cool in our oceans? Why are the temperature forecasts going out to the end of July this cool across the United States? Historical heat wave index, much warmer in the 1930s. And in the future, you're going to be responsible for taking care of some of your own food production. Sprouts, microgreens, trueleafmarket.com. The ADAPT 2030 link is in the description box below, as well as all of the links to tonight's images and stories. And speaking of posting stories, steam it. ADAPT 2030, text along with the images in the videos I'm producing now. Remember the heat wave stories back in February that the news told us that the Arctic was melting and it was the hottest ever, completely out of the normal? Well, they forgot these last 50 days where it's been below normal. I guess it doesn't fit the narrative. So these are the temperatures here from 80 degrees north latitude around the top of our planet up to the North Pole. That arrow that I just put there for today's temperatures, that's how far below normal we are. And that blue line that you see going around 273 degrees Kelvin is freezing. Zero degrees Celsius, 32 degrees Fahrenheit. That is literally just a degree above freezing. And also with the Arctic sea ice volume, the projections by IPCC were down, 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 down. But in reality, that sea ice is starting to come back and the thickness this year is definitely anomalous. It's still 15 feet thick at the North Pole. All while we're being fed in the media over this last month of July, warmest planet ever. I ask you just to look at the sea surface temperatures. This is the seven day change. So blue means it got cooler in the last seven days. Some areas became warmer. And if it's truly the warmest year ever, the sea surface temperatures should be reflecting these heat that they're showing us out of the temperature stations. And then zooming into the Atlantic, I'll ask you how much heat compared to cooling is there in that? White is no change. Also look in the anomaly, just a different way to look at it. The last chart was how much changes occurred over seven days. Now we're just looking strictly at the 1981 to 2010 average. Is it above or below? That dark blue. Water temperatures, these are Celsius to to three degrees Celsius below normal. Also up in Hudson Bay, you'll see it. And that meltwater pulse going into the Arctic is gonna be cooler and cooler. Look for more sea ice. David Dilley's predictions are correct. And also over here, Joe Bastardi, Twitter feed with this one hosted, taking us out to July 31st with temperatures. Now it's just my estimation, but when I look at this, I see equally as much cooling is warming so there's got to be balance over at least Mexico United States and Canada so maybe it's not going to be the hottest month ever and speaking of where some of these temperature stations are placed that are giving us these readings of warmest year ever notice that they put some at the end of airport landing runways cartoon kinds of sums it up Michael Mann the reference point there full of hot air Another contentious issue we're being fed, it's the hottest ever, ever. But when we really look at the heat wave index going back to 1890, you notice the spike right in the 1930s. That was the Dust Bowl era. We are over on the right side. And it looks like we're equal with something out of the beginning of the 1990s, middle 1950s, or right around 1900. Not even close to being all-time record warmest. And again, some of these temperature data measurements coming out, as you can see here, how the NASA warming showed four tenths of a degree per century, but then by 2017, wait a second, what happened to all the data there where it suddenly has doubled the pre-2000 warming rate to eight tenths of a degree per century? How did that happen? I thought mathematics was a static number. Also, another one here off Real climate science, this actually came from NOAA, temperature reconstruction for the United States. 
And as you can see, 1930s were even a bit warmer, and suddenly, whoa, this chart just disappeared once it was discovered. Glad there's a way back machine. And as we do progress into the grand solar minimum, we already know that the intertropical convergence zones are going to shift along with cloud patterns, rainfall, heat, cold, etc. Let's just go back to the last 1100 years and that red right in the middle and that blue at the bottom is where you're looking at. Those shifts and movements that you see, those are natural variability. That's what's driving your climate. And we can see the repeating cycle once again. Everything's beginning to move. That's why our weather's becoming so strange. If you can forecast where it is, we know where our crops are gonna be lost. Then we can take measures to try to replant, move grow zones, or substitute what grows there, knowing what kind of conditions are in our future for the next 25 years. Thanks for watching. Hope you got something out of the video. If you liked this type of content, remember to subscribe and click that bell to get the latest updates. And I have longer commentary on Mini Ice Age Conversations, my tri-weekly podcast, iTunes, Stitcher Radio, SoundCloud, Intune, Libsyn, Google Play, and anywhere else that a podcast is hosted on the net.